Hello there, watching Al24 Midnight News coming to you from Algiers and to the headlines. In Palestine, Zionist forces raided once again a Palestinian village close to the West Bank city of Jenin, killing another three Palestinians. And to adopt a unified position on Libya, the Libyan Foreign Minister called on all Arab countries to work within Algeria's initiative for Arab reunification. Coming to you always on the Mark Gates scandal, another investigation revealed that the kingdom used to send sums of money to European politicians in exchange for whitening its image with European institutions. And despite the popular rejection, French senators voted by majority to raise the retirement age from 62 to 64. Hello again and welcome. I'm your host, Abdurrahim Kashour, and those were today's top stories. Starting from the Middle East, large Palestinian masses in Jenin mourned the bodies of the three individuals who died at the dawn yesterday in an assassination carried out by the Zionist forces during their violence against the town of Jaba in the south. Participants in the funeral chanted slogans calling for national unity and to put an end to division stressing the continuation of struggle and the Palestinian people's refusal to surrender. The three Palestinians were killed by Zionist soldiers fire on Thursday in West Bank city of Jenin. According to the health ministry, while the fourth one died of wounds, he sustained on Tuesday continuous deadly Zionist race. Nabil Khazini. It is becoming the daily life of the Palestinians. Every day passes, more names are added to the list of the dead, or rather, the killed. This car was carrying three young Palestinian men before being shot inside their vehicle. All of them have been killed. I heard intense gunfire. I went out. There were special forces inside the White House. They started shooting toward the car which the martyrs were driving. This brutal act adds to the latest death of a 14-year-old child, Walid Saad Dawood Nasser, who was critically wounded by occupation forces while storming the city of Jenin and its camp two days ago. The occupation forces are making the life of Palestinians a nightmare. More eight citizens were arrested in the West Bank. In the Holy Aqsa Mosque, 132 settlers stormed its courtyards, knowing that such acts are provocative. The Palestinian presidency said that Palestinians are waging a major national battle in defense of Al-Quds and the independent national decision. Thursday's deaths came two days after six Palestinians were killed by occupation forces during a raid in Jenin. In total, at least 77 Palestinians have been killed since the start of this year. The same matter and concerning Palestine, Saudi Foreign Minister Faisal bin Farhan Al Saud and the Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov stressed on Thursday the importance of reaching a just solution to the Palestinian cause in order to achieve stability in the Middle East region. We are working to activate efforts to solve the Palestinian issue, and there can be no stability in the Middle East without this matter, through the implementation of United Nations resolutions and the Arab Peace Initiative. In the local matter, People's National Army Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Saeed Shengri had received on Thursday the Libyan National Unity Government Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Mohammed uh, Ali Al Haddad. According to a statement by National Defense Ministry, Shengri has stressed the importance of exchanging views concerning the region's regional development as well as a stand in within the bilateral cooperation extent. <laughs> ومساندة الشعب الليبي للثورة التحريرية الجزائرية 
Our common history and the support of the Libyan people for the Algerian Liberation Revolution requires us as officials in both countries to work together to solve crises that affect the security of the region and destabilize it, especially when it comes to helping to provide political, diplomatic and security means to engage in peaceful endeavors that benefit the peoples of the region and enable it to develop and advance. This is in line with the principles of the Algerian foreign policy, in line with the international charters of the United Nations and the African Union, and is based mainly on the policy of good neighborliness and focus on multidimensional cooperation for the development of peoples and support for their right to self-determination and non-interference in the internal affairs of states and the peaceful settlement of disputes. And for his part, Libyan Army Chief of General Staff expressed his happiness visiting Algeria while praising the depth of brotherly relations between the two countries reflected through the military cooperation between the two armies. The Libyan-Algerian relations have deep roots in history, just as Libya was a support for Algeria and its people during the resistance to French colonialism. Algeria is always a support for Libya, as our two countries have historical relations that are rare to be found anywhere in the world. The Libyan Foreign Minister Najla al Manakouj called on all Arab countries on Wednesday during a meeting of the Arab League Council to work within the Algeria's initiative for Arab reunification, calling on Arab states to adopt a unified position on Libya. On Wednesday, the Libyan Foreign Minister Najla al Mangouch reaffirmed her country's support for the Algerian initiative to reform the Arab States League. Al Mangouch called in her speech at the Arab League Council at the level of foreign ministers for all Arab countries to work and cooperate with the Algerian approach that promotes Arab reunification and revive the Arab League institutions through the joint Arab action brought in the previous summit of Arab League in Algeria. Alongside the changes that are accelerating in our region and with the view to raising the level of response to the aspirations of our peoples, I reiterate my country's support for the Algerian initiative to reform the Arab League. Algeria long ago called for the revival of Arab League's role in prevention and settlement of conflicts. The country has always expressed its willingness to cooperate with the rest of the Arab countries and the General Secretariat of the Arab League for the sake of developing the Arab performance. And I urge the current rotating presidency of Egypt to work together with our brothers in Algeria as well as all member countries aware of the importance of injecting a new dynamic into the structure of common Arab work. The Arab League, which will celebrate the 78th anniversary of its founding this month, is at stake in developing its organizational texts and regulations in order to produce a unified Arab policy on common issues, as Libya stressed from the platform of the committee. Head of the Libyan National Unity Government, Abdel Hamid al Beba, announced his support for peaceful change without political deals and holding elections in the country, stating that the government and the independent High Electoral Commission are ready and committed to the electoral entitlement. He added that his government has asked the United Nations to raise the level of coordination to conduct the electoral process in Libya. We support peaceful change without political deals or turning around with the will of Libyans. The government and the High Electoral Commission are the most ready and committed to the electoral process. And we renew government's commitment to implementing the elections. And we have provided all support to the High Commission. We called the United Nations for raising the level of coordination in Libya to raise readiness for the electoral process. The Secretary General of the Algerian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ammar Bilani, received on Wednesday the Ambassador of the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic to Algeria, Abdel Qadir Talib Omar. The discussion included the stalled political track due to the Kingdom of Morocco's persistent rejection of inalienable right of the Sahrawi people to self-determination and its efforts to obstruct the cause of decolonization in Western Sahara in violation of international law. 
During a meeting with uh, Guinea-Bissau President Omaru Sissoko in Balo, Tunisia's President Mr. Qais Sayed rejected accusations that he is stalking anti-black racism, saying that he has sub-Saharan African friends and that his comments last month targeting migrants were misunderstood by his enemies. Omaru Sissoko also said that it is not impossible for a country like Tunisia to be a racist country. I wouldn't believe that you, the president of Tunisia, the country of Bulgiba, could be xenophobic or racist. You yourself are African. I am African, and I am proud to be. The Tunisian president, Qais Saied, for his part, said that we reject the misinterpretation of our statements that do not serve the image of Tunisia, but rather harm it. What we don't accept is that our statements are interpreted with the aim of harming Tunisia and some African countries. Those who want to do this, we refute that, and we tell them that you have been misdirected. Seen in the African continent, investigation published by the German channel Deutsche Welle revealed new details in the Mora Gate scandal, indicating that the Moroccan regime has adopted a fraud policies based on pumping huge sums of money to European politicians and parliamentarians in exchange for whitening its image with European institutions. Hassan Berkan. New details have been uncovered in the Moro Gate scandal revealing the Moroccan regime's corrupt practices of bribing European politicians and parliamentarians with large sums of money. According to a German investigation by Deutsche Welle, the Moroccan regime adopted this fraudulent policy to improve its image with European institutions. The investigation published by Deutsche Welle sheds light on the depth of corruption in the Moroccan regime. The Moroccan ambassador to Poland, Abdurrahim Otmon, granted Panzeri, former EU lawmaker, 50,000 euros in 2014 to finance his election campaign in Milan. The leak also shows that the regime paid for luxury trips to Morocco for Kelly, Giorgio, Andrea, Cosolino, and Maria Arena, who are all EU lawmakers. A Moroccan diplomat paid 50,000 euros to Panzeri to fund his election campaign in Milan in 2014. Investigation transcripts reveal that Ambassador Abdurrahim Atmoun also paid for luxury trips to Morocco for Kylie, Georgie and two other EU lawmakers, Andrea Cozzolino and Maria Arena. Panzeri admits that MEP Mark Tarabella of Belgium received 20,000 euro in cash and potentially up to 140,000 euros over time. The investigation revealed that Panzeri remained involved in the fraudulent policy after leaving office in 2019 through an unregistered non-governmental organization. Observers say that Mahzen's policy is based on bribing European politicians with large sums of money to engage in a dirty diplomatic game that whitewashes Morocco's business in European institutions. The new details exposed by the German investigation reveal the extent of the regime's corruption practices in the Morocco Gate scandal. French senators voted by a majority to raise the retirement age from 62 to 64 years. Despite popular rejection, which prompted trade unions to call for a popular mobilization to drop the draft amendment to, re to the retirement system starting next Saturday. Everyone has to listen to each other. We have made a lot of progress. In the reform project, we had started the campaign with a retirement at 65 years of age. We have listened, we propose other provisions, we will continue to listen. Now listening to parliamentarians because the debate is now in the parliament. The anatomic watchdog confirmed that the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant in Ukraine has lost all external power supply and is relying on diesel generators. This is the sixth time that the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant has lost all off-site power and has had to operate in this emergency mode. Let me remind you, this is the largest nuclear power station in Europe, operating for the sixth time under emergency diesel generators. What are we doing? 
Russia said on Thursday that a landmark deal to ensure the safe export of grain from Ukraine's Black Sea ports was only being half implemented, raising doubts about whether it would allow an extension of the agreement due to expire next week. The deal was extended for 120 days in November and will renew on March 18 if no party refused. However, Moscow has already signaled it will only agree to an extension if restrictions affecting its own export are lifted. The first part of the grain deal is the safe export of Ukrainian grain from the ports of Ukraine along the Black Sea. And the second part of the package is the need to remove all obstacles to the export of Russian grain and Russian fertilizers. The first part is being fulfilled, and we, the Russian Federation, are fulfilling all our obligations in this regard, together with our Turkish colleagues. The second part is not being fulfilled at all. Coming back to Algeria, the Algerian energy giant Sonatrak announces in a press release the signing of sponsorship agreement with the Algerian Football Federation FAF. The agreement concerns funding of national football teams in all categories in 2023 and 2024. This sponsorship deal was signed by the chairman and the CEO of Sonatrak Group, Mr. Tawfiq Hakkar, and the president of the Algerian Football Federation, Mr. Jahid Zevsif, during a ceremony organized at the headquarters of the general management of Sonatrak in the presence of executive leaders of the Sonatrak Group and their counterpart in the Algerian Football Federation. <laughs> Sonatrak will always do everything it can to help all Algerian teams in various sports. Today is an occasion for us, and we are proud that we will accompany the national football teams in all categories. I hope with full conviction that this partnership between Sonatrak and the Algerian Football Federation will be a fruitful and a successful step in improving Algerian football regionally, continentally and globally. The Algerian Football Federation is honored and pleased to cooperate with this well-known institution. And we are absolutely certain that the experience and the image of Sonatrak Foundation will inevitably lead to obtaining added value. This agreement is a partnership whose goal is to open a new page for important cooperation that we as Federation can benefit from so that we can achieve the main goals in the football development program and support on national teams and its several categories, especially the first team, and we affirm that all teams are required to achieve their goals through upcoming entitlements. Ladies and ladies and gentlemen, thank you ever so much for being with us in this news bulletin at midnight. For more updates, you can follow our social media platform. And all I can say at the end, Take care of yourself and good night.